So one important thing we wanted to do uh, alongside the video, because obviously we have real people um, telling their own stories in it, was we wanted them to do a short interview just to kind of, I suppose, give people more of an insight into their background and and their part and their role in the video. Um, I, th I think more than anything, it was just to raise awareness for each of their individual struggles, just so that people can watch the video and then they might kind of pick something out and then go okay I might, I might watch that kind of that one that rings true to me so so my third year of uni I had a massive breakdown and um I became psychotic I was really unwell and um I was put into a psychiatric hospital and they gave me a diagnosis of schizoaffective disorder which is like schizophrenia and bipolar like a combination my behaviour changed, I became very um, isolated and, and quite violent. Um, I was seeing things and hearing things that weren't there. That's when things began to really unravel and um, I started to self-harm. Uh, alcohol became a real problem for me. But I'm not in the place that I was, you know, I talk about it now. That's the thing, I talk about it. I talk about it and, and talking about it just makes all the difference. I've struggled with anxiety for about the past seven or eight years. Um, growing up, I was all, always fairly confident. I didn't realise it, but I, I've watched old footage from when I'm a kid. And I used to dance around and I was really confident. And um, I, I can't really pinpoint when things changed, but at some point it did. And I turned extremely introverted, um, kind of a little bit scared of people, really. As I suffered with self-harm as a result of that. Um, I suffered with eating disorders and uh, a lot of that was hidden for a very long time um, from family and friends in school and it was just kind of like an internal struggle. Like a hundred like me, it's not a hundred, it's probably more like, like thousands, like millions of people. Well, I lost my business in 2012. After five years, it was a bookshop in Cranley and I lost it for a variety of reasons which are Quite upsetting even to remember now to be honest. I went into my shell number one, I just didn't want to go out, um, I was watching TV, I, concentration was going and I didn't know what to do either um, and to be absolutely honest I, I, I started drinking too much. I'm through this, lots of other people have had this, they've got through it, you read it in the newspapers of people who succeeded against adversity. When you're gay, I guess, uh, if you're looking for help, you have to out yourself at the same time. Um, I didn't really see that as an option at the time. And it was almost like they knew before I knew. Um, and I, I found it quite hard to kind of understand that, I guess. And it was difficult as well to tackle because it wasn't just like one person was beating me up or bullying me. It was this whole outlook at me, like they all, just had this opinion of me that I couldn't change. Yeah, that went on for quite a few years and I tried to I tried to get some help. So after I was told I had anxiety, um, I, I spoke to my friends about it. And, you know, I was quite surprised to find that a lot of them had been through really similar experiences. You don't go to like parties. I think I missed several events. And to, to a point where like my group of friends would be like, do you just not like us anymore? Do you just not want to come? And I was like, no, I really, really do. But I was terrified. And then it makes it even scarier to say, actually, I have really bad anxiety and the thought of going to Pizza Hut this evening is just not, not doing me very much good. I know that there are hundreds out there that have it and there are hundreds that suffer from it. And there's no age. You don't get it when you're born and don't have it when you're 20, you can get it at any point in life, and I think that's so important to remember. People are very afraid to comment on scars. One reason why I started cutting again when I was older was I had a friend who, um, she was going through a very emotional time and she started proper, proper cutting. And I didn't want her to be alone, but I got a scalpel out of the um, medical cabinet at my stables in South Africa, and I'd actually worn it around my neck almost like this like little hidden symbol for myself. And I went into the bathroom, I took out my scalpel, and I put it there, and as I started, my boss burst into the, because she was worried about me. 
she shouted my name and I panicked and that's why I went too deep. I am human, I am still alive, this is not some weird dream, it's okay. Go on with your life again. You are definitely alive, don't worry. This isn't somebody's cruel, horrible trick on you. Life is not that, I can guarantee it. I sometimes am not convinced. <laughs> yeah. 